In today's case study, we are going to cover an organization called Charlie Health. So let's dive right in. Going right onto Glassdoor, and we're going to go right to the interviews section. That's the section I always look at, and I truly care about the most when looking at it from a hiring process and interview strategy perspective. So at this top section, you'll see positive 22%, negative 60% and neutral 18%. So the fact that the negative reviews are almost three times the positive reviews, that's an indicator of some opportunities for improvement and even at a neutral 18%, want to really bring that number down. Now when we go here to getting an interview, I just really want to find a solid mix when I look at this section. So the fact that close to 80% are applying online, we want to see more recruiter reach outs, more employee referrals, etc. Difficulty wise, a 3.0 in difficulty, almost all reviews, and you'll see this is so consistent, it's usually around 2.5 to 3 is the average. So I'm going to hop over into a Google Doc to just go high level on some of the feedback. But what I can tell you is that there is a ton of very recent feedback. March 6th, all the dates are here. March 9th, March 8th, March 7th, March 14th. February 10th, there's a lot of recent reviews. And almost all the data I took was just from the last five months. And we're gonna get back to why that's so important here in a moment. So, what did I uncover? Here are some of the items that I think are important for you to know. So, we saw a poor interview process and the top items are pretty common, like an overall bad candidate experience was mentioned multiple times. Lack of interviewer engagement, interaction, that's also very, very common. So that kind of led all to a little bit of a lack of professionalism. Now, the next couple are grouped together. Somebody had an interview with three people. One person didn't show up. And then they said an interviewer left halfway through the interview. I mean, talk about a bad candidate experience. That's right at the top. And then multiple people noted just a little bit of length in process and some rescheduling issues, especially last minute. Now the recruiter process, this is where most of the negative comments came in. And these were very consistent items. Multiple, multiple people mentioned being ghosted, um, which led to, you know, obviously an overall bad candidate experience, which I already noted. Lack of timely follow-up. This is pretty common from the recruitment standpoint. Lack of organization, poor communication, and lack of overall professionalism. This was just so consistently noted. I went through about the first four pages of feedback. Again, almost all that feedback is very recent. So then one of the more interesting pieces that happened on Glassdoor is feedback can be left. So there was feedback left on a number of negative reviews, maybe five or six of them, but not all of them. So I feel like that consistency piece is just really important for organizations. If you're going to leave feedback on negative or neutral or even positive reviews, just be very consistent. And then you can see I just took some of the notes like, thank you for the constructive feedback. We're eager to improve. Thank you for taking the time. We're committed to making sure everybody has a good has like a good process. Thank you for the feedback. We try to treat all candidates equally. But here's the missing piece. If organizations are going to take this step, I strongly encourage organizations to leave some sort of email or contact information where the candidate could reach out and tell them more. Why? Because it's just a fantastic learning opportunity. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of note so much of this specific case study is going to be about recruiter training or lack thereof and just the tenure of these recruiters. So There's actually 20 in total that I found. There's one director of talent and one manager. But for flatline recruiters, this is their tenure. So very, very new recruiters. We're going to go into their LinkedIn profiles and go high level here. But four at two months, four at three months, two at five months, one at six months, one at seven months, etc. So there's only four of these 18 recruiters are at over a year. And then the majority of them are at less than a year. And obviously, these numbers at two months and three months. And remember, on LinkedIn, it's always going to give you that current month, too. So it's really like they're pretty brand new. So let's dive over. Let's look a little bit more at the LinkedIn side of things, and then we'll hop onto their careers page. So let's start 
with the leadership team. So what I like about Carter's profile is this of all the background LinkedIn photos, this one's the best. And she's really kind of pushing towards hiring. I think I counted, I don't know if it's the right number, but I think they have 87 open roles. So give or take, it's about 90 open roles. It's a lot of open roles. So they have a lot of recruiters to fill those roles. And so here's one interesting data point. So I'm seeing her as CEO and co-founder. She's saying two years and three months. So then we go over to Caroline and she's also noting co-founder and she's the chief clinical officer here. Now she's also noting two years and three months. She's the only one who's used this as her background LinkedIn photo, which is not very consistent with the other branding. Then there's Justin, and I don't really know how Justin fits into the picture. There's no branding here. He has no picture. And then interestingly, he's saying three years and three months. So this just from a branding perspective looks a little strange to me. And I would really want the leadership team to have a little bit more LinkedIn alignment. So now we are going to quickly dive in to the recruiter profiles because I just want to highlight some opportunities, a little bit of lack of consistency. So let's dive in. So instantly with Chez, I think that's how you pronounce it, we're hiring. But again, if we go right back here, I like Carter's better. We're hiring at Charlie Health because I really want to brand the organization. And he's left out the icons here of Charlie Health and the education piece. So just a couple of opportunities there. Now, he looks like he's newer to the organization. So probably just building some of those processes and strategies. And obviously, building LinkedIn would be one area where I'd really want him to look at for the organization. Then we have Matthew. Again, this is my favorite photo. And he's got a little bit more tenure there. Um, we're looking at about 11 months. Now let's look at some of the recruiters. So Michelle, again, no branding up here, no recent posts. So you would hope that uh, somebody who was coming into the organization was posting their open roles immediately, two months. Then with Shane, again, the be an ally, I like that, but I really want to go more to a Charlie Health branding. And then again, just at two months as well. Then we go to Adam, again, Charlie Health, but I'd want to see the we're hiring piece. And then really, sometimes I'm really looking for what do these people do? Like, what are they recruiting for? And, and that's missing here. I'm not going to highlight that too much, but it's a missing concept as well. And then we go to Dominique. She's the fourth person with two months of tenure and she's branding herself up here. And I would really like to see her brand the organization. And again, she's new to the organization and hasn't posted a job which is something that I would expect from a recruiter entering an organization right away. So we're back to the good banner. And now we're at people who are at three months and I'm gonna to start to go a little faster. But again, there's, there's some inconsistency here. Douglas hasn't posted in a while. Again, with Elizabeth, she says we're hiring. She doesn't say what she recruits for and, and there's no Charlie Health here as well. Then we go to Bree and she's got this background photo again. It, I like a nice background photo, but I, I want it to be really consistent with the brand. And so we scroll down here also at three months. Then we go to Frank again, off branding here. And then we don't know what he recruits for. And then Drew off brand, no posts lately. And he's been there five months. Then Elena, again, she's kind of put her own banner here. She has some activity. I'm not really sure what she recruits for. Then Kate and Kate, no activity here. Again, not sure what she does and we're hiring, but again, no Charlie Health. So you're seeing some of the consistency. So what, what has Brie done well? I wanted to take a moment and really highlight her profile because she's done some things that are, have gone really well. Number one, I love what she's done here. So this is recent. She's posted these 11 jobs and it looks like it's coming in slow. So I can just close that out. But she has all of her jobs listed here. So that's a great chance for me to connect with Bree because I actually know what she's hiring for. And she's got a little more tenure here, 10 months. And again, she's got the good banner. Now with Kenny, again, no, we're hiring. Um, but now he puts his skills, but not exactly what he's recruiting for. With Kyle, we're hiring CH, but I wouldn't know that that was Charlie Health. 
So just a lot of branding opportunities. And I know I'm really diving in here. This is really quite a bit to go through LinkedIn profiles, but consistency is really, really important. And that's one of the reasons why I look for these items. And again, no listing of the positions they're hiring for. We're hiring no Charlie Health, no company information here at all. And again, the skills are going towards what they use and even seeing something like Greenhouse, I know they have good tools in place, so there's a great opportunity to do some good things. With Amanda, we're hiring. Again, no Charlie Health here. We scroll down. Now, she's doing a little bit more in telling us what she's what's going on there. And then lastly is Julia. And Julia, again, has done what Bree has done. She's listed her open position 65 days ago, though, is quite a bit of time. So, I know it's a lot to go through all those profiles, but what this is telling me based on the Glassdoor feedback is, is that there's not a real training in place for recruiters and how recruiters can create a unified branding strategy, but also there just needs to be some training on overall organization and follow up and how to really create that great candidate experience. And again, the Glassdoor reviews really said that. So now let's go to the website. I literally really don't have any negative feedback here. I think they've done a really good job on their careers page. So this is just kind of landing on their home page, which looks pretty good. It, it's clean enough. I like it. And then when we go on the careers page. It's very, very clear that this is right where we can click and we can jump and dive in right there. And then if we go into one of their positions, which I opened up admi admissions coordinator, just really well outlined, really good organization here. And one of the key things I look for here is the base pay. Just got to have that base pay range. If you're going to be hiring across the country, there's going to be absolutely states like Colorado, California, New York that are going to need those salary requirements. So I think they did a really good job on the overall website and careers page. I just think there is a huge opportunity with all these new recruiters to get some really good recruiter training in and especially on candidate experience. And a lot of that just has to do with some organizational skills and learning how to follow up. I hope this video was good.